Welcome back to Voicey here, and Merry Christmas everyone! It's a nice reminder to know that God hasn't abandoned us here on this earth full of entitled people, but there is actually hope of a world without evil. Whether you celebrate the birth of Jesus or not, I hope you have a day filled of love, joy and peace. Today we have some Christmas themed entitled parent stories, but the last story is going to have a little wholesome twist, just to finish on that high note. Don't forget Voicey veterans to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story was called EM Leaves Child at Daycare While She Goes Christmas Shopping. I work at a childcare facility and we are open from 8.30 to 4.30. We have strict rules about these times. 4.30 is supposed to be the last possible time you can pick up your child, not the time you start showing up. We have a policy to charge for every 15 minutes past 4.30. But we tend to be nice and not do that if it's a one-off thing and you're there before 5. We have a child with an EM who is late a lot. This year she has to pay late fees over a dozen times and always fights it, saying, I pay you to watch my son, don't I? Anyway, this morning she comes and drops off her boy and comes up to me and says, I'm going to be a bit late to pick him up today. Usually with parents, that means they'll be showing up 10 to 15 minutes after 4.30, which we accept. But I knew that this lady wouldn't be doing that. Sure enough, I ask her what time she expects she'll get here, and she says, Hopefully 6.30, but no later than 7. I have to do some Christmas shopping. I was shocked. She had been told again and again, 4.30 is the latest she can pick him up. I replied, that isn't going to be possible. He needs to be picked up by 4.30. Later than that and you're charged. After 5.30, we call the police if we can't get a hold of you. She answers with, I have urgent Christmas shopping to do, so you'll just need to watch him. I reiterate the policy we have and she says, You've said yourself my son is a great kid. You should feel lucky to spend that time with him. I thought you work here because you love kids. Or do you just do it for the money? I'm starting to rage inside, but I can't yell in front of the kids, so I smile. Tell her again the policy we have on pickups, and tell her to speak to the manager if she doesn't believe me. She laughs and says, Just do what I pay you for and watch him, and walks off. I tell my manager who calls her after lunch to remind her that she needs to pick up her boy by 4.30 at the latest. Apparently she laughs it off and says she'll pick him up, so we hope that's that. 4.30 rolls around and her son is now the only kid there. We keep him entertained while we clean up and she is called but doesn't answer. By 5, my manager calls saying if someone doesn't answer the phone or come pick him up, we have to call the police. We try the emergency contact numbers but one is a friend already out of town for the holidays and the father doesn't pick up. We wait a bit because having the police here will upset the boy but by 5.30 we don't know what else to do. I call once more and she finally answers. When I tell her she needs to come collect her son now, the conversation goes like this. I told you it was going to be late. And I told you that wasn't acceptable. You're lucky we haven't called the police already. Don't threaten me. You knew I was going to be late. I told you I needed to do Christmas shopping. That's no excuse. You need to come get him right now or we have to call the police. So they can bring a social worker down to collect him. You really know how to ruin Christmas, you bee. I just wanted to get some presents. Just come pick him up now. Fine. You were the laziest teacher ever. You don't even want to look after one child. With that, she hangs up and around 5.45, she pulls up. The manager tells her that this was serious and she'll have to take it to the board to see if they're going to take it further. Report her to child services or refuse a place here for her child next year. EM loses it, saying we've ruined Christmas and that she could have us all fired and that her family is used to VIP treatment in this town. Her husband makes a lot of money. And that she is disgusted we don't understand that. To top it off, when asked to leave, she grabs a $10 note out of her purse and says, Here, I've paid the extra time you miserable bunch have done. Get over it. He's an angel to look after. Hopefully the board take action against her because she is unbelievable. If she's so important because her husband makes so much money, you think she'd be able to afford to take her kid to a daycare where they're open extra hours. You just gotta love when somebody claims that everybody else is the selfish one. And why is that? Oh, because they won't do the thing that satisfies their selfish needs. This story was called Babysit Our Kid on Christmas for Free. 
So here's the story. W. Hot, sexy, beautiful, very much pregnant wife. Relevant. M. Me, the husband staring at them confused. E. M. Annoying entitled mother, also boss. E. D. Entitled dad, also boss. So my wife and I have been married for almost two years now. We split the holidays because our families live in separate cities. These people know that. This year it's my wife's family year for Christmas. We planned it with our respective jobs, asked off, and both got approved. Only problem? My wife is a nanny. She works hourly and gets paid for time ahead of time. She's pregnant and the poor woman has days where my future child really just knocks it out of her. This results in her owing time, which is fair. We don't mind that. However, this was just too far. So they invited us over for dinner and this is how it went. Kato Duck and Miss Kato Duck, we invited you because we need to ask you something. I rolled my eyes, I knew they were going to pull something. They've been notoriously self-absorbed the entirety of my wife's working relationship with them. And these people were friends that used to go to our church. So me and my wife were looking at them and waiting for them to ask whatever it was. And she looks at us with a bright smile on her face. You can't have off work anymore. We need you to watch Entitled Child on Christmas. I laughed and then saw that they were dead serious. My wife looked at me confused and shook her head, explaining we already bought the plane tickets to go and we are not able to get out of this. This is where the kicker comes in. That's the thing. You can't say no. You owe us hours. You are going to my boss's Christmas party. There were no kids that will be there. Meaning we'd work it for free. Granted we wouldn't do it for money anyway, but I'm darn sure I'm not doing it for free on Christmas. She looked at me and I could tell she felt uncomfortable. My wife doesn't do well taking up for herself and people often try to abuse that. None more than these people. So I shake my head no and remind them, they already approved this. We aren't doing this. They don't take no for an answer. Entitled child! Come out here and tell Miss Ghetto Duck how you were so excited to spend Christmas with her. So in walks this child, which granted is a very big product of her environment. She's four and I can't really blame her for how she behaves when her parents act like this. Hi Miss Ghetto Duck. Daddy said we spend Christmas together. Hi excited. So now we have two parents trying to force this and a child I had to crush the dreams of. Basically what it came down to was me pushing my plate ahead of me and looking them in the eye. You either stop this nonsense now or she walks. For what you're paying her, you know you won't find someone else. We leave the house and my wife thanks me in the car because that was stressful for her and the baby. And then they text us and tried to call our bluff. It was basically a, do it or else you're jobless this Christmas. So she hit them back with, have a happy new year because she was ticked at that point and we didn't talk to them. However, today was her shift and they messaged her last night asking if she was still coming in. So all in all, just work for classy people who aren't stupid. <sighs> really? Using your four-year-old child to try and manipulate them to stay? You know, maybe these people were in a bind, they really needed a babysitter, whatever. The problem is, you have a working relationship here. There was a very real possibility she could have quit and then you need to find somebody else to replace her. Not just for Christmas, but for then onwards. If you said she could have the time off and then she goes and buys plane tickets, why on earth do you think she would be like, well, yeah, you prepaid for those hours, so I guess Christmas is all yours. This story was called, She Stole All of Their Christmas Presents. The cast, my mother, her sister, a live-in babysitter, the entitled parent in this case, with a three-year-old daughter, and my grandfather whom I'll call Papor. This story is one my mother told me about and stick to the end because there's a wholesome ending to it. When my mother was growing up, she was born in the 70s. For a very brief time in her and her sister's life, they had a live-in babysitter. Papor worked all day and this was before they were old enough to go to school, so they had to have someone watching over them. They hired this young woman to live with them in their trailer with her three-year-old daughter. It worked out because the woman had nowhere to live and he would pay for her watching over my mother and aunt. At this time, my mum was about four, so she doesn't remember much of the woman, nor any personal interactions, but she does remember this incident. Papa was planning on letting the babysitter go soon because of how this lady was raising her kid. This was around Christmas time when mum, her sister and Papa all left the trailer to go shopping. 
leaving the woman and her child at the house. When they got home, they realized something bad happened. The mother and her child were long gone out of the trailer. Apparently this woman not only took all of her and her child's things, but she stole every single darn present from under their Christmas tree, and some other items throughout the trailer. They had no way to contact her and had no idea where the heck she went. My mother and her sister were devastated, and it was only a few days before Christmas. Papa was broke by this point, so he had absolutely no way to replace any items stolen. They were all pretty heartbroken when this happened. My mother and aunt slept on either side of the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve, and pretty much cried themselves to sleep because they knew they weren't going to have a Christmas that year. The very next morning, they both woke up with Christmas presents surrounding them. This shocked everyone as 1. The trailer was locked up tight, 2. The wrapping paper was not one they recognized, and 3. My mother was an incredibly light sleeper and never woke up once that night. That year she got clothes, Barbies, and a doll. My mum would note that that was the first Christmas her clothes never had to be altered, because back then she was in between sizes, considered a double zero nowadays, and somehow all of her clothes fit perfectly for once. While my mum still doesn't know who it was who went out of their way to do this, I do know that she grew up around some awesome neighbours, and honestly, I'm pretty sure their neighbours got together and helped save their Christmas. Ah, oh, well there we go, we finish on a Christmas miracle. I mean, it's pretty sad that the babysitter felt so desperate, or is just so evil, that she would steal the Christmas presents. It doesn't seem at all like the family was doing that much better than the babysitter, and yet she stole what little they had at the time. I really like the idea that all the neighbours gathered around and put something really special together for the family. But it's kind of eating me up inside how the trailer was locked and yet they somehow got all the presents in there without waking them. Was one of the family members in on it? Surely one of them had to be, right? Merry Christmas everyone. Post your stories, memes and fan art at r slash voicey here. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright voicey veterans, I'll see you in the next one.